Hi everybody, Steven here. So you need to understand what user management is in VMware Cloud Foundation. Well, that's what we're gonna cover, so stick around. Thanks for sticking around. Uh, this shouldn't be that long of a video. Uh, let's talk about, what we're gonna do is talk about user management in VMware Cloud Foundation, more specifically the uh, SDDC manager, right? Um, now, before I begin, I always like to throw this out there. Um, please support the channel. If this is something you're interested, in, please support the channel by subscribing. It's easy, just click that subscribe button. It's totally free. Uh, I also have um, super thanks enabled. Uh, that's totally up to you. Uh, another way also to support the channel is again, liking and sharing the videos. So anyways, enough of that. Let's jump right into it. So let's get this going here. All right, so let me log into my SDDC manager. So let's go into here as log in SDDC manager. And uh, let me log in as administrator at vSphere.local. That's my single sign-on domain. I'll sign in with my password. I'm not going to bother saving that now. Uh, and then I get uh, again the guided setup and whatnot. I'm just going to get rid of all this stuff and just get rid of all these things here. Now, one of the things uh, in my previous video that I did was the guided setup, right? Um, and you may want to watch that, okay? And I'll, show, I'll explain that one in a minute, right? So first of all, let's go into single sign-on down here, right? So I'm gonna click on single sign-on and right off the bat, you see users and groups. And then you'll see identity provider. Let's talk about identity provider right now. So if I click on identity provider, you'll see there's vSphere.local. That's my single sign-on domain in my, um, for my vCenter server. This is what I created when I set up my uh, VCF or my VMware Cloud Foundation. So you can use users in there. There's also local OS. Local OS would be like the SDDC manager. It's running basically a flavor of Linux. So think of a Linux user on there. You could create local users. Most people probably aren't, um, but you have to use APIs apparently. I personally have not done that. Don't really see the point in it, but you could do it. And then you'll see over here, I got V class, right? I'm using Active Directory over LDAP. Now in my guided setup, I actually showed you how I set that up, but let's say you didn't do that, okay? Um, and you didn't follow that, but I would again, suggest you watching that video, right? Um, so I can go into here and say, I wanna add, what type of identity provider do I wanna add? Do I wanna add Active Directory over LDAP or open LDAP, whatever the case may be, right? I'm gonna click on, uh, Active Directory over LDAP. And this is very similar to the guide, almost exactly the same as the guided setup. Uh, it's gonna be an embedded identity provider. It's gonna be either open LDAP or Active Directory over LDAP. I'll just select that, I'll go next. And at that point, you go in and you fill in all the information. Now, I would suggest that you watch my video on that, okay? Um, and I walk you through this and you save it. Now, I've already got mine set up, so I'm just gonna go back to single sign-on, right? So there's my V class. All right, great. Let's look at users and groups. So let me stop recording right now and break this into two. Okay, so let's go into users and groups over here. Uh, if you wonder why I stopped recording, I like to break it up into chunks in case something happens, it crashes, I don't have to do the whole thing over again. Anyways, what we see here, we see we have the administrator vSphere.local, that's my single sign-on domain, uh, and it's got the administrator role. Then you also see the, um, the there's also a group here called the vSphere uh, on vSphere.local called SDC admin, and it's a group, and it ha also has um, uh, the administrator role, basically all access. So why don't we do this? Let's go in and add a user, okay? Um, now, before I do that, I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways. Now, let me log into my vCenter server. So I'm gonna log into my vCenter server. Okay, back to login screen. And I'm gonna show you, uh, let's go back to the, the home here, whatever, hosting clusters. Now, what I'm gonna do is, let's say you're not using Active Directory. You probably are, okay? But let's say you're not, uh, and you wanna use the v, uh, the, uh, your vCenter server single sign-on domain. In my case, is called vSphere.local. I try to mimic our lab environments and uh, anyways, uh, for what I'm teaching and stuff. So I'm just gonna go into here. I'm gonna go into administration. Down over here, I should see, um, where are you? Single sign-on, users and groups. So now again, I got my domain, local OS, right? 
or I can say, uh, again, I have this integrated with Active Directory. That's why you see vclass.local. It was all part of that a guided setup. But let's say I want to, I didn't have any of that. And I just want to use the vsphere.local. You'll actually see there are some users over here, some built-in ones. Let's add in one. I'll add in, let's add in Steve. And I'll specify a password. What's that password there? Okay. One, two, three, bang. I don't care that you see that password. It makes no difference to me. Uh, and I'm going to go add. So I just added a user called Steve uh, on the vsphere.local. So my single sign-on domain. I'm not using Active Directory, let's say, right? So great. Let's go. Now, one of the things here, if we go back to the SDDC manager, you'll see there's a group here called the um, SDDC admins on vsphere.local. Why don't we try adding Steve to that group and see what happens? So let's go into here. Let's go into groups. And again, there's a few pages here. If I can just do a search, SDDC. And there is my SDDC admins. That was created as part of the bring up process. If you haven't seen that video, you want to watch that. I'm going to click on this group and you'll see there's no members in there. I'm going to go add members. And again, um, where do I want to add members from? Again, in this case, uh, I'm using vSphere.local, my single sign-on. And I'll type in Steve, and you see it right there. I'll select that, and you see Steve's added, and I'll save it. I just create, I just added Steve to that local group in my vSphere.local. Let's go back into here. Let's log out, and let's log in at Steve, uh, oops. V, sorry, vsphere.local. Hopefully, I got that right. And we'll type in the password here. And I'm not going to bother saving it. So, Steve, now let's get rid of all this stuff here. So, you see over here at the top right, I'm logged in as Steve at vsphere.local. Uh, I can go into network settings here. I can create network pools, storage settings. I can add VASA providers. I basically have full access in here. Okay. All right. Great. And that's Steve at vsphere.local. I can even go into single sign on. Steve can actually go in and modify groups and users. Let's log out as Steve. Let's log out and let's log back in at my, as my administrator. Administrator at vsphere.local. So I just showed you. Let's say you're not using Active Directory. You could use your single sign-on account and create users there. But most people have Active Directory set up. Right? I'm going to kill all that. Now, under my single sign-on, again, I already showed you, I already have my identity uh, provider set up, my vclass.local. That's Active Directory. And I showed you how you could do that. Let's go into users and groups now. And let's go in and add a user or group. Now, notice I can refine the search type. It says all user types or single user or a group. Let's just look for the single user. Uh, and what domain? Do I want to look at them all, the local, the vSphere? No, I just want to look at my Active Directory domain called vclass.local. So I'll select that. And it shows me a list of all the users. Now, if I had hundreds of them there, I could do a search. Now, you'll see I actually have a couple of users here. One I call VC, uh, VCF admin. Let's select that user. Now, when I select it, over here on the right, you see the role. This is the big thing here. So you've got admin role basically gives me full access to everything, okay? That's Zeus of Mount Olympus. They can do whatever they want. The operator role is almost like a cut down version of the admin role. Uh, they can pretty much do everything, but they don't have access to like the backup configuration. They don't have access to single sign on and stuff like that, okay? But they pretty much can do everything else. And the uh, viewer role is basically a, like a read only role uh and the um but they cannot view like the single sign-on information like user and group information so let's give this one the admin role um now notice over here i got one called bob let's select bob and let's give bob i don't know let's give bob the viewer role only okay how about that all right um and you know what i got santa over here as well <laughs> why don't we give santa the operator role right so we'll give santa operator bob viewer a VCF admin, the admin role. Let me scroll down here and say add. Okay, great. Let's log out and let's log in as VCF admin. And let's type in our password. Hopefully I get the right passwords on this. 
And again, I can get rid of all this. So I'm logged in as VCF admin. I can go into here like network settings. I can create a pool of storage. I get, I got, and again, you'll see single sign on here, uh, identity providers. I, I got full access as VCF admin. Great. Let's go into log out. All right, so let's log in as Bob. And now Bob, I gave the viewer role only, right? So Bob should be able to just, well, first of all, we don't see any single sign-on over here. So I can't look at user information. If I click on network settings, storage, basically it's just viewing information only. Cannot make any changes or any of that kind of stuff, right? So, so that's Bob. Let's log out as Bob. And we trust Santa more, so let's log in as Santa was a user at um, vclass.local. Again, those are Active Directory accounts. I'm not showing you creating those. That's part of Active Directory. You can mess around with that. Let's go into login. Now, Santa, we gave the operator role. I said the operator role is sort of like admin. Let's go to network settings, right? Notice, again, I could create pools, storage settings. I can I can add a VASA provider. So um, the operator role basically is a cut down version of the admin role. But notice over here, there's nothing here for like single sign on, right? So that operator cannot mess with passwords and groups and identity providers, okay? So that's kind of the differences. Let's log back out. And let's log back in as, as administrator at vsphere.local. Oh, what's going on with my uh, keyboard here? save it so we're back in over here let's get rid of this stuff and let's go back into single sign-on and now let's look here you see Santa again all access except password management user management backup and restore again Bob uh, read access except read access except password management and user management so that's pretty much it <laughs> not a whole lot of stuff here no you can't create your own custom roles and those are the three roles that you have uh, i would imagine that eventually um, vmware is going to enhance this where you'll be able to create your own custom roles but i have no idea when that's going to happen hopefully it'll be sooner than later uh, like with nsx back in the day with nsx we had basically some some roles just some basic roles and that was it you couldn't create your own it wasn't as pop or wasn't uh as dynamic or as powerful role-based access control as vcenter server so again this is what we got right now and that's pretty much it so it's pretty straightforward uh, you set up your um, identity providers, you add your users, and, and you give them one of the three roles, okay? Whether it's full access or, or operator or, or reader or viewer only, okay? Uh, but that's basically it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. It was pretty short. Um, again, leave comments down below. And again, if you found this entertaining at all, hit that thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks very much, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye now.